In this lesson, I want to talk about the functionality and usage of Azure Policy. And Azure Policy becomes the answer to many questions when we think about governance. Now, in ye old days, in ye old days, I was a business user and I wanted to have some resource created on servers we had in our company. Now, the way we did that is there was the ops manager, the operation staff. So I would put in my request, maybe a ticket, an email, knock at the door, and they would kind of evaluate that request. They would make sure it meets the criteria and requirements of my company, and then they would go and actually provision it. But they were doing the checks. They were ensuring it met the requirements. Well, now we have the cloud. I have Azure. And Azure is all about the idea that, well, it's self-service. I, as the user and things like DevOps and pipelines and continuous integration and delivery and deployment, there's no ops manager in the middle of this anymore. Instead, I'm doing this. I'm provisioning directly. Now, as a company, I still have requirements that have to be met. There might still be regulatory things that I have to be careful of where I put data. I can only put it in these regions. I have certain security requirements as my company that I don't go and stick things with a public IP address. I maybe need to make sure data is replicated to a paired region. So I still have those guardrails that I need enforced. So how do we do that? Remember, every single interaction with Azure is actually going through the Azure Resource Manager. So when I'm doing this provisioning, well, let's change the arrow slightly. It's not going straight to Azure as such. That arrow is provisioning into the Azure Resource Manager. And so it's at this level, I want to enforce my guardrails, the things that I need to be enforced. And the mechanism for that is Azure Policy. This enables me to specify, look, what are the requirements? Now, I can run that in different modes, but the idea is I create these policies that I'm going to apply. Now, remember, and I've drawn this picture so many times now, when I think about Azure as a hierarchy, remember we have that whole idea of, well, Azure's actually a bunch of management groups. I'm going to get lazier and lazier as I draw this picture. But we have the management groups. Then we have the idea of under that, at a certain point, hey, we have a subscription. And then within there, I have resource groups that actually contain my resources. And if you remember, hey, we could use that for role-based access control. Azure Policy, likewise, I can apply to all of these different levels. And absolutely, again, this is inherited. So the goal of an Azure Policy is I'm defining some requirement. Now, I might end up with a lot of different policies. So what we're typically going to do is instead of assigning an individual policy, well, we're gonna have a whole set of these policies. And what we actually do is we put them in something called an initiative. So I'm gonna create an initiative and it's the initiative I apply. So that consists of N number, multiple policies go into an initiative. So it makes it easier to assign, but also then it makes it easier for me to track compliance. Cause I don't just use this to enforce something, I might use it just because I want to know, well, are they meeting that? So I can see, well, what percentage of my resources actually are meeting these things? So that's the idea of a policy. I'm going to define my guardrails, my requirements, and then I'm going to assign it to a certain scope. Now, for those different policies, they actually can have different effects. So I'm saying the idea of enforcement. I'm going to make it do this thing, but it's actually not the only thing I can do. When I think about this 
assignment of the initiative or the policy, and it's the policy I define this, I have different effects that I can do. Normally I'm gonna start off with audit. I don't wanna stop people doing things. I might have done the policy poorly and it would completely break down the ability for my environment to function. So if I start off in an audit mode, I can see, well, what percentage of things are not meeting this? Maybe there's a better communication I need to do in advance. I can do things like deny. So once I'm confident it's not gonna break the world and I need to actually enforce this, I could do deny. There were things like append. There were things like modify. That tag addition, for example, I might use that. Hey, if it's not there, let's append this value to it. And there's even things like if not exists. So there's deploy if not exists, audit if not exists. So I can actually help remediate. So I have all these different effects. And a policy is really just based around, hey, there's some condition, and if it's met based on the properties of these things, I want you to do this thing, I'm gonna use this particular effect. So if we jump over for a second, if we go here, and you'll notice actually while I'm here on subscription, we have the ability to see policies. So it's showing me the compliance of all the policies that are actually in place here. But what we can actually see as well is, hey, assignments that I have at the subscription level and ones at child resources. Notice I have some initiatives as well. But instead, if I actually just jump over and we'll look directly at policy. So firstly, we have the definition. So what are these policies actually doing? And there's a huge, huge screens and screens. Now I could say, hey, actually I wanna focus on a certain category. So instead of seeing all of them, maybe I just wanna look at ones around storage. So now with storage, well look, I could say, hey look, I wanna limit which SKUs of storage you're allowed to use. So here I can see, okay, these are the allowed SKUs I can have. I can have parameters, so, Oh, okay, the allowed, the effect I'm gonna have. You can see I've actually got this applied to my particular subscription. And if I look at that, okay, so I've got the list of allowed SKUs. You can see the parameters I passed, what are those particular SKUs that I'm allowing within my subscription? And then my effect is to deny. So if I try and use a SKU that's not one of these, it will actually deny me trying to create that. So a definition, is really just, what am I looking at? So if I look at the definition, what is the rule down here? Well, I can see the rule is I'm looking for it to be of type for the resource of storage resource provider and storage account. And I'm looking for a certain field. So these are defined as aliases, but they're properties of the resource. So I'm looking at the SKU.name property of the storage account and it's not in the list of allowed SKUs. So if the resource is a storage account, and it's a SKU that's not in the allowed list, this would apply, and then it will trigger the effect, which in my case was deny, but again, could be audit or other things. So that's all a policy is. It's, hey, what is it applying to? And then what do I want to do? But very often, again, I might be trying to meet certain regulatory requirements, so instead of having to define individual policies and applying it 100 different policies, I can create an initiative. So here we're looking at initiatives and we can see there's a whole bunch of these built in again about things like HIPAA, um, CMMC level three, NIST, SP800, consisting of 989 different policies. And the whole goal here is I can just apply this initiative and all of these will then be applied, and I can then track the compliance of all of these together. And Azure uses this for the security center, so Azure Security, or Defender for Cloud, as we now call it, has that Azure Security Benchmark, which is an initiative, which just has 206 policies, and that is actually how Azure Security Center, or Microsoft Defender for Cloud, works. It has all of these policies that goes and looks at things, 
And then that's how we track the compliance and we get those various scores. That's really all it's doing. And this is huge, so it's gonna take a while, probably longer than I want to wait. But this is how that actually works. It's using this initiative. And from this as well, I can look at the compliance of all these various different things. So here I'm just looking at compliance and here I can see all those different things that are applied. Some of them are initiatives, some of them are individual policies, but I can see that compliance state of all of them. So the key point here really just is the point of a policy is it lets me define those things that I need at different scopes. If I apply it to a management group fairly high, I want to be fairly generic with those set of policies, and then I get more specific as I drill down closer and closer to the resource.